Hi guys and welcome to another episode of my channel and in today's episode we're going to be talking to Lillian Wigora. Um, she's a top reporter and she works for um, Fox News 47 in Michigan. I've asked so much about her and I think it's going to be very important to have somebody like her come on the channel and share her experience as an international student because um, stories like this are very very important to help people generally through the whole do of like going to school, graduating from school, getting a job, just general general international uh, student lifestyle in the US, right? And being um, a top reporter working for a news company in the US, that's a big deal. And I believe a lot of my audience are going to benefit from her wealth of experience and how she was able to navigate everything from A to Z. And um, I look forward to our chat. Hopefully, you guys will learn uh, one or two things from her, right? Of course. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, where where should we start from? Where should, where should we start from? Um, before we get into okay, let's go. Before we get into the details of the conversation, can you tell us what your typical day looks like? What do you do from day to day as a reporter? Yes, for sure. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, as a reporter or multimedia journalist, I every day I need to find a story. And I, you know, need to connect with people in the community, trying to find something that's interesting for people to know. I need to find people to interview. I have my own equipment, so I film them and I need to film myself. I write the script myself and then that will air on TV every night. So that's kind of cool to see a product every day and really feel accomplished because I put something together that is airing on TV. A lot of times I also anchor the morning headlines which means I will be in studio and read the headlines from the teleprompter. That's, that sounds really super exciting. You know, like um, getting, coming up with story ideas, putting together like information and then having it being shown on TV. You know, that's, I'm sure that's, that's like, that's something massive. You know what I mean? It's, um, if you sit down and think about how huge an accomplishment that is, it is um it is something that worth like taking a moment to think about how far you've come from like being a student to being somebody that can reach out to people and create a story and have that story that same story being heard on TV. That's that's it. That's a big thing. So a follow-up question to that is this: What did you like the most about your job? Because it sounds as if you do a lot of things. You know, sourcing your story, interviewing people, making the video, and then working as an anchor, and all of these amazing, fantastic things. Of all those things, what do you like the most about what you do? Telling the story of the people and telling a story that really matters. Like just yesterday, I interviewed a mom who lost her son to anorexia. And that was such an emotional interview. And I really feel like it will benefit people to watch the story. So I feel like stories like that are really rewarding because I know that they are going to make a difference. That's amazing. Um, that's amazing. I think it is not far-fetched based on this conversation, based on, based on what you said about what you do and why you do them. It is not far-fetched that you've come so far like in accomplishing some of the things that you set out to do when you came into the US in the first instance. Then that takes um, like setting a goal and pursuing it with so much dedication that you've shown in, in our conversation, that takes somebody um, that is focused and exceptionally, uh, uh, in, with exceptional intent in pursuing and achieving their, their, their goals. So that's, that's really nice. I, I look forward to the rest of this conversation because I know that my audience is going to benefit a lot from this conversation that we're about to have, right? So um, thank you for joining us. Can you give us a background as to how you moved from your own country down to the United States? Yes, for sure. So I came from Germany and I always knew I wanted to work in this field. I always knew I wanted to work um, in the media and the news. And that's why I was like, okay, how, how am I going to reach that in the best possible way? And I thought if I come to the US and study in English, that would really help me to distinguish myself from other German students who are studying journalism in Germany, because I would have this foreign degree. So first, I didn't come with the intention that I want to stay in the US. Then I needed to get a scholarship because it's hard to afford um, studying in the US. And I tried to get one with volleyball and that worked out. 
which was not easy, but that's the, how I came. That's, that's remarkable though. So you came for uh, a program in journalism, right? And mm -hmm. um, because as an international student, you said something very crucial. Funding is a big deal. No matter where you're coming from, it is expensive to study in America. Even Americans, they get into a lot of debt just to get through school. So it's quite remarkable that um, you were able to like, secure a significant scholarship for yourself. And the, the, the most interest, interesting thing about that is it's it, even in like the hobby aspects, you said something about like um, um, basketball or volleyball? Volleyball, yes. Volleyball. See, so that's remarkable. That's, that's really, really remarkable. Thank you. Yeah, so I, you know, volleyball was always my biggest hobby in Germany, but for me it was never the number one priority. It was always like behind school, so that's why I think it was kind of hard for me to adjust to the pace and also the strength training they are doing here in volleyball. And for funding, I think that's for sure very difficult because we we don't have this option to get a loan in the U.S. You know, yeah. or nobody's gonna yeah. sign your <laughs> nobody's gonna sign your loan. Nobody's gonna be like your guarantor or something like that because there's always this fear that. Um, you get the loan and you go through school, you get your certificate and then you're going to leave and go back to your country. And it's going to cost a lot of money for them to track you down and get the money back. So what's the point of giving loans to international students? But something I really want to like uh, focus on, like coding on is this. It's about like, um, you see, people, people tend to assume that America is, well, it's not assumption. America is a place of opportunity. That's why you and I, that's why we're here. There are so many opportunities and um, it's what we're both in a way thankful for because um, this country can afford a lot of opportunities, right? But the assumption for most people is that once you get to America, things begin to fall in place. Like, oh, you don't have any stress or any problem anymore, you know? Like a lot of people have that assumption, especially if you're not here, you know? Um, yeah. So, I, I, I think um, how you were able to adapt to the situation is kind of impressive and I would really want to talk more about that, you know. People come in here, they get like partial funding or full funding and you're always on the lookout for where your next tuition is going to come from, you know, where your next like house rent or something is going to come from, right. Mm -hmm. So, I, I would appreciate if you can talk a little bit about how you um, harness like your smartness and your volleyball <laughs> power and intelligence and drive to get what you want out of the system, right? Can, can you talk a little, a little bit more yes. about that? Yes, I think that's very important to know before coming to the US that it's really, really difficult as an international student and but also like not getting discouraged by it but just knowing what to expect and being ready that there will be a lot of doubts as well and the first thing, of course, when we come to the U.S., I think language is a big problem because even even though in Germany our education and like we have a good system, we need to learn English very early. Um, and I thought, oh, okay, I will be I will be fine, you know, like it will it will work out. I still came, and I when everybody was talking from the volleyball team, it was just too fast, and I couldn't even say a sentence, you know. And for a long time. Like, it felt very long, I think, like, for two months, I felt like I couldn't say, or three months, I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't be myself or couldn't really show them my personality because I couldn't make jokes, like, you know, how am I, how am I doing, it? like, saying anything I really want to say, but for some people, it's also good to know there is the option to, to enroll in English as a second language classes. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, ESL. ESL, yeah. Know. Yeah, all schools kind and of have something like that. So, I think it's good to know that there's usually that option at a university and, you know, that you could even combine that with classes to maybe not get behind in the course of study. And then, I think it was good to come with a sport because at least I automatically had people around me every day, you know, and like a the kind of support system and coaches I could ask for help and stuff but it still felt to me like okay all of them all of my teammates came here like 
they live like two hours away or an hour away or you know and it felt to me like okay they already have their friends they are not like actively looking for new friends mm -hmm. and I felt like that was really hard because I came hoping okay I need friends because <laughs> I don't know anybody so that was I think the second biggest challenge and then what about the opportunities you mentioned for sure that I mean do you want to um what how did you experience like kind of the same things that I'm say, talking yeah, about yeah yeah so so when you said friends um I think I think I have a video on my channel where I talked about like American culture so I'm from Nigeria by the way and in Nigeria, we it's so easy to make friends because you can just you can literally just sit down beside somebody in class and talk for like five minutes and you guys become friends, right? So next time they will text you, hey, we have this class. Are you showing up or do you need me to like it's so easy to make friends, right? And then I got to the US <laughs> and then I had I remember our I, I my first semester I was taking a class. It was um a cell and molecular biology class, one of the main class on my program. And this person sat beside me for almost four weeks, right? And we never said hi to each other, okay? And there was this particular time I said, you know we've been sitting together for almost four weeks. I don't know your name. The next time, she moved to a different place. Like... Wow. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like... I feel like... I feel like Americans generally, they... Um, it's, it's a cultural difference thing, right? It's... It's just different. They don't. They have like, just like you said, they have like, you assume that people have their like close circle of friends and it's, it might be a bit difficult as an international student to penetrate that, that group of friends, right? So those are some of the challenges that you tend to face. And, and kudos to you because it's one thing if you speak English, right? Because in Nigeria, English is like our primary, um, it's our official language, right? So we speak English everywhere. I had like, I never had issue with English and my accent might be there, it's very very obvious, but I'm going to speak in a way that you would understand me. But I can only imagine uh, how much of a hurdle it, it, it must have been for you with English being your second language. You know what I mean? Like it's not the language that you speak officially in your own country, but you have to come in here and you were able to adapt and not just adapt and make friends, right? Which is an important lesson that like I think my viewers can benefit from in the sense that it is not so much about what is in the system, it is much of what you're able to make of it, generally, right? So that's, um, that's, that's really amazing. So yes, I can relate to what you said about like making friends, about um, not being lonely, like um, being, being lonely and trying to, no, you know, you can't talk yeah. much. Yeah. No, and I think being alone is a big part because um, you know, if you live on, you, you need to live on campus as an international student most of the time, and at least in the first one or two years, and you will be alone a lot, I think, and like, if, unless you are always connected with your team and you're, like, if it's a sports team, I feel like then it can be easier and you have a lot of games, so you naturally spend a lot of time with them, okay. yeah. but if there's, a, like, in the beginning, if there was a weekend, everybody went home and you know i didn't have a home to go to so then i was in my room and that can be very challenging like to be like okay that's okay it's okay to be alone it's okay <laughs> not to be happy every day like yeah. this kind of thing yeah yes you mentioned opportunities earlier and that you know america is the country of opportunities but i do believe that we really have to work for to get those opportunities and for example I always try to challenge myself and in the beginning of my studies I started working for the Starbucks on campus just to become more um, used to the language and being forced to talk more and then um, I always you know apply for internships first in my university and then outside of campus because there is the option to get a CPT yeah which is like um, Curriculum this, practical training. Yes, yeah, so the work authorization to work off campus in an internship, and I think that's already that's already something that could lead people to say, oh no, I it's too much work. I I'm not I'm not going to be able to do it because it is 
you need to be brave to go off campus to work for a real company and like yeah. be like, okay, I, I my English is good enough to now face real, real jobs. So I think that's something people should be knowing and that they really should try to do it because it's an awesome opportunity. I've been taking notes every now and then, just like some points from what you're saying. And and initially when I introduced you, I I told the audience that. Um, I heard about you as an accomplished um, reporter and based on the conversation we've had for the past 10-15 minutes it is easy to like summarize most of the things that you said into like four main points you, you, and, and, and my goal is to kind of like recap that at this point in the conversation and basically you laid emphasis on being brave it is important because it is difficult yeah. and if you can yeah. try like you you are trying right now that's a perfect example of what it means to be brave you know like seeing opportunities seeing what you want it, as a matter of fact living your own country and flying thousands of miles to a different country that is braveness by itself you know so yeah. so 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 that's one thing that I would really really want my audience to latch on to think about like Bravery is important. It, it means going after opportunities that you don't think you're qualified for. Because by default, I mean, you, you see people speak fluently. I'm going to tell you something. My first class, no, my first semester, sorry, not my first, my first semester, um, it was a graduate class, right? People were asking questions and all of that. And people were saying things and everybody looked so smart. And I was like, oh no, what have I done? I don't think I'm smart enough to be in this class. Everybody, they were sounding like, they were sounding really smart. Everybody knew what they were talking about with conviction. They, they sounded so flowing. It's like, hmm, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, so I missed all of that. To shift that thought behind and pursue what you want aggressively, um, that's one of the key things that I've been able to take away from this conversation. Like, you have to just be brave about your pursuits. And you also said something that, that is very important, like that, that, I, that, that I think is very, very key. You only begin to enjoy your experience when you start contributing something to, this, to the community, to the society, to your school in particular. He said something about, oh, well, I took a job at Starbucks because it allows me to interact with more people. It allows me to practice my English language. But that's, that's part of contributing to the community. That's part of con contributing to the society. So, I, I, the, it's been a very nice conversation. Is, is there anything that you would like to say in particular, like to your day one American self, like the first day that you landed here? If you have something to say to that person, what would it be? I would say, Louisa, you have to take off this pressure because things are going to come. You don't, like, you don't need to think everything needs to happen within a month or two months, you know. Everything is going to come at the right time. Um, like the language, friends, buying a car. Um, that's something that is, you know, a big difficulty I feel like for a lot of people because we, we come to the US and we realize, oh, I have to yeah, <laughs> get a, a car. Public transportation is in most cities a joke. Yeah, so it's, it's very, that's, that's something that's, I think, challenging because we come when we're 18, mostly, most of the time, and we, we're not used to buying a car, you know, but, yeah. so, or maybe don't even have the money for it, so, you know, there are a lot of things that we need to worry about, and I would just tell myself, okay, it, everything at, by, step by step, you know, it's, it's not going to happen all at once. But it's going to happen eventually if you keep working at it, which is what has happened to you now. I mean, you've had, a, you're, you're having an amazing career in your field. You speak the language fluently. You have the things that you, you, you had, you had doubts about on your day one. So that's, um, that's amazing. Yes. I so yeah, I agree that we definitely shouldn't give up and should always keep trying and follow our dream, no matter how many challenges we are facing. No matter, no matter how strong our accent is and if people are going to say anything about it then you know it is what it is and 
we still have to try to get internships or jobs that benefit us in some way. And I yeah, always try to do that throughout my school career. And I think that's what helped me get a job because I, you know, every semester I either did an internship or I worked at something that helped me. For example, I gave um, English, um, English um, tutoring classes um, to other international students. So um, that was like an experience that helped me and, you know, benefited me somehow because I, you know, could help others with the language and stuff. That's good because, um, because that's good because it, ex it, ex it exemplifies that you're not just selfish about your own growth, you know? volunteering to teach other people because you've been in their situation you've been in their shoes right you know how it feels to have english as a second language how that can really really affect your self-confidence it can people don't talk much about it but if you don't speak the language fluently if you have an accent it can affect your self-confidence but you taking up the responsibility of helping people through that phase that is something that i consider very very amazing and i think um it's something that more international students should do. You know, if you've gone through a particular phase, it, it, just like you, just like you're doing right now. You know, having this conversation, um, I think it's good, it's helpful in a way that somebody somewhere would watch this video on YouTube in the nearest future, and it might be their lowest moments when they are down, when they feel like, oh, I'm not good enough to be in this class, or my accent is gonna stand in my way of progress or I don't think I'm ever gonna get a job I don't know what I'm doing I don't have friends but then they're gonna watch a video like this that you uh, spoken like about your experience and it's gonna help them to stay strong sometimes you need things like you just watch and be like hmm well if this person can do it then so can I so 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 this is a very great um, thing that you've done to to spare the time to just come have a chat about your progress and how you've been able to achieve such a remarkable feat in the United States. So we, on behalf of my audience, we're grateful for that. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. But yeah, no, I, I definitely think that no matter how hard it is, we should, as international students, keep trying. And we know that what we're capable of in our own language, and we should also believe that we can do that in our second language. If you know, if it's our second language. Um, because we we could do it, you know, yeah, <laughs> and we cannot stop believing in ourselves, and you know we cannot get discouraged by people saying, "Oh, you have a, a strong accent," or even people, a lot of people say, "Oh, your accent is so nice," you know, like people are usually nice about it, but at the same time, it's not very, not a compliment to it's us, not. Us, right? It's not. See that that is that is it. That is it. Like. People say, well, where are you from? Your accent is so nice. <laughs> yes, I get every it. day. You're trying to be nice, but I, 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 I think there are no... It's just something that if you don't, if you're not in our shoes, you cannot understand. You cannot. Yeah. You cannot. Because I'm trying, so I'm picking my words very, very carefully. I don't want to say things. I don't want to say things the wrong way because I don't want to say pardon. I didn't hear you. I don't want. I don't want a situation where like it will be awkward. You know what I mean. So yes. and and we don't want to seem stupid. And that's something. Yeah, that's very. I even talk with other international like students about it um, because a lot of times we feel like oh maybe they think we're stupid because we cannot say the things in a smart way or you know something yeah. and. I think we should, we should think about ourselves more highly and think, look what we've done. We came from another country and we try to adapt to a new culture. We try to do everything they're doing in their first language. And most of them might not even know another language the same way. That's true. So I think we should be really more confident in our English skills. Yeah, that is that is that is true. That is true. That is true. And and I think I think seeing people like you and myself, like seeing people hearing of those that have gone ahead and do like gone through this phase, it's gonna be like encouraging enough for people. Like um, if you 
if somebody stumbles up on this video, say like four or five years from now, and they have like it's some level of self doubts about their English skills or what they can do, but hearing stories like this is gonna be a very very huge inspiration as to why they should keep on going, why they should not think of themselves as an incompetent person, but rather somebody that has an extra level of competence because you speak a whole new language. You used to live in a whole new world and then you move here and then you're able to adapt and survive. So that's that's key. That's it's been an amazing conversation. I've learned so much and, and it's so also nice to be able to have this conversation with fellow international students, really, whether you're in Michigan or you are in Georgia or you're in Ohio, wherever it is, you're an international student and the experience is all is almost going to be the same, right, because we moved here. So I'm glad you spared the time to come and talk to us about your experience and also some of the knowledge that you shared. They are very, very powerful. So um, just in like 30, 15 seconds, what would be your parting words, the last thing you want to say before the end of this video? I think it's really important just to say that if you're thinking about going abroad and you're hesitant, know that you will be able to overcome all the challenges it is possible and yeah if you are right now in the u.s and struggling to know that just keep going don't give up and believe in yourself because you have the all the abilities to reach what you want you just have to work hard for it true that's that's solid that's good advice um thank you so much for your time and um we're grateful for this opportunity okay yeah thank and you so much that's all see you in the next it's hot.